I believe today's first reading deserves our undivided attention and thoughtful reflection. The Israelite army was again engaged in battle with their neighboring nation, this time the Philistines. In their initial encounter, almost 4,000 Israelite soldiers were killed, which cast a shadow of gloom and despair over the Israelite camp. The elders couldn't help but wonder how and why the invincible chosen people of Yahweh, who are always supported by the mighty hands of God of armed forces, suffered such a severe defeat. It was unthinkable for them to be defeated by a pagan army that worshipped demons. And it was indeed a humiliation for Yahweh as well. So they decided to bring Yahweh himself to the forefront to teach the Philistines a lesson. Do you remember the story of the Israelites out at Mount Sinai? They attempted to give a physical form to their God by making a golden bull, but failed. Moses interfered. Later, Moses allowed them to build the Ark of the Covenant to symbolize Yahweh's presence and placed the Ten Commandments inside the Ark of the Covenant. And from then on, the people of Israel carried the Ark with them everywhere they went and guarded it with great care and respect, like maybe children carrying their beloved toys and dolls. But of course, they guarded it with utmost care and reverence. The people of Israel were unable to capture Yahweh in the form of an idol, but they eventually succeeded in containing him in a cage called the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. This had a significant advantage. People could lock him up and bring him out only when they needed him to save, to defend, to lead. God should not be always present as if people needed privacy. God should not interfere unnecessarily in their daily lives. So he was locked and kept away. And for this reason, maybe one day he set apart and dedicated entirely to his service once a week. The Israelites brought the Ark, the same Ark of the Covenant, to the battlefield, and the army was jubilant and excited. The battle resumed with great enthusiasm and valor. However, by the end of the day, the Israelites' army was utterly destroyed again, with a terrible casualty count of 30,000 dead. And moreover, the Philistines now captured the Ark of the Covenant and took it away. The reading today is a reminder that relaying on idols and attempting to manipulate God to achieve one's goal is not a wise choice. Even Prophet Elijah expected to see God in incredible displays of power, such as the tempests, earthquakes, and fire. But Yahweh was not present in any of these. Only after Elijah humbled himself let go of his ego and abandoned his idolatrous belief, did Yahweh reveal himself in the mysterious sound of sheer silence. God whispered the melodies of his divine mercy to Elijah in sheer silence. The day's message is that God cannot be controlled or manipulated. He is not a toy or a puppet for us to play with. In contemplating the ark's tragic loss and the futile attempt to confine God to a tangible symbol, we are reminded that true faith transcends human constraints. God cannot be manipulated or confined, for his presence defies containment. The lesson echoes through history, urging us to seek God, not in external symbols, but in the depths of our hearts. Let us abandon the notion of a captive God and embrace a relationship that flourishes in humility and silent communion, recognizing that God's mystery unfolds 
in the quietude of our souls, not in the confines of a crafted structure or misguided expectations.